In this video, we're going to discuss the Big Bang model of cosmology and the evidence that we have for it. We know that galaxies are moving away from us and that if you observed galaxies at any given point in the universe, you'd see the same thing. What we are actually observing is the expansion of space-time itself. Galaxies are moving with space-time as it expands. What's not happening is that the galaxies are moving through space as if they were exploding away uh, from each other through a pre-existing space. Space-time itself is getting larger. Galaxies and matter are not expanding through a pre-existing space. Let me describe to you what I mean. Here are two different models of expansion, Model A and Model B. We have a grid that's been set up to represent space-time, and the dots represent galaxies within that space-time. Which model, A or B, shows a universe that is uh, not expanding over time? If you answered Model A, you would be right. Model B shows a universe that is smaller in the past and larger later on. Which model, A or B, shows galaxies moving through a pre-existing space over time? If you said Model A, you would be right. Model B shows galaxies moving with space as it expands. Which model, A or B, shows a universe that more closely resembles our actual universe? If you said Model B, you'd be right. Model B is the one that represents more closely our actual universe. Model A is a commonly held misconception among people who think about expansion. They think that galaxies are just expanding away through pre-existing space. But what's actually happening is the expansion of the universe creates new space and time as it expands, and galaxies are just along for the ride. So let's examine this correct model a little bit more. I have marked here earlier and later. When was the universe smaller, earlier or later? It's pretty obvious that it was smaller earlier in time, and today it's larger. But what about this? When was the universe denser? To think about this, we have to consider that the matter-energy content of the universe has stayed the same over time. We're not creating or destroying matter-energy in the universe. If the universe was smaller in the past, then it was denser in the past. The same amount of matter-energy content existed in a smaller volume of space. When was the universe hotter? For a volume of space that contains matter-energy in it, the smaller the volume, the denser it will be, and therefore the hotter it will be. So the universe was hotter earlier in time. This leads us to the idea of the Big Bang. The universe was hotter, denser, and smaller in the distant past. The moment in time when the expansion began, when the universe was infinitesimally small, that's called the Big Bang. And every time after that has a universe that is expanding, is cooler in temperature, and less dense. When the universe first began, the temperature in the universe exceeded 10 to the 40 Kelvin. And at this temperature, the matter-energy content would be all energy and no matter. But that matter energy could later convert from one into the other at lower temperatures, and we know how this happens using equations of quantum mechanics, and especially the E equals mc squared equation that we get from Einstein. This shows us about matter energy equivalence. In the first three minutes that the universe existed, it was expanding rapidly, but it was still very hot. It was hot enough and dense enough to convert some of its matter-energy content into subatomic particles and then atomic particles, such as the nuclei that make up hydrogen and helium. After the first three minutes of the universe, it was uh, too low in temperature and too low in density to make any elements heavier than hydrogen and helium. All heavy elements were built inside of stars much later on in the history of the universe. For most of the early history of the universe, up until about 380,000 years after the Big Bang, the universe was so hot and so dense that photons of light would be scattered very quickly in their journeys through space. 
That is, you wouldn't be able to see through space because photons would be scattered by the electrons which were disassociated from the atoms at that high temperature and density. The universe would be opaque. But after this time, after 380,000 years, the universe reaches a low enough temperature that electrons connect with uh, nuclei of atoms, and that allows for photons of light to travel freely throughout the universe. At this moment in time, the universe in all locations releases photons in every direction. And this spectrum of light is what is produced from a, the hot, dense early universe. Fill in the blank. A hot, dense universe produces a what type of spectrum? From our studies earlier, we know that a hot, dense object produces a continuous spectrum of light. And so this model of cosmology predicts that when the universe reaches this specific temperature of 3,000 Kelvin at about 380,000 years after the expansion begins, a continuous spectrum of light will be produced in all directions and at every location. This model predicts that if we were to observe this light today, we would see a continuous spectrum that has a peak wavelength in the microwave portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. We do observe this light. What you're looking at here is a black body spectrum that is actually measured using microwave telescopes. The red X's are the measured intensities of light across the microwave spectrum, and the green curve is the black body curve predicted by the equations of the Big Bang model of cosmology. This image is the microwave light given off by the early universe in all directions. This is an all-sky map that's made by the most advanced microwave telescope that astronomers have. It's called Planck. This is a fairly recent image, and what we see is that the spectrum of light is essentially the same in every direction. The very small changes, going from red to blue in this image, are extremely tiny variations. The tiny variations tell us about the geometry of the early universe and where quantum fluctuations in space-time itself gave rise to distributions of matter that we see today. This light from the early universe is called the cosmic microwave background, or CMB. The CMB is evidence that the universe was hotter and denser in the past. The Big Bang model is the only model, the only viable model in cosmology that accounts for this particular observation. What this shows is that the universe changes over time. It could have been that the universe and space-time is expanding, but new matter and energy and new space was being created concurrently. And so as time goes on, we would just see new galaxies with the expansion. But that's not the case. What we do see is that when we look far enough out into space, and therefore far enough back into time, we see the remnant light from a hotter and denser universe. This could only be the case if the universe was smaller, hotter, and denser, and had a particular moment when the expansion began. 